Vibe physics. I've learned people now use AI to develop new physics theories. I think that's great in principle. Physics needs new ideas. In practice, I've seen a lot of junk come out of it. Sometimes new, sometimes correct, but rarely both. Which is why today I want to look at four different large language models to see how they do with the task of coming up with new physics. So that's GPT-5, Claude Opus 4.1, Grok 4, and Gemini Pro Ultra Extra Super Deep Think, or whatever it's called. Before we can do that, I'll have to briefly talk about, well, what I'm going to ask and what I expect. The example I've come up with is a vague idea that I've dragged around with me for 20 years or so to solve one of the millennium problems. The question of whether the Navier-Stokes equation has blow-ups. The Navier-Stokes equation is what one uses to describe fluids and gases like, for example, climate and weather models are basically solving the Navier-Stokes equation. Roughly speaking, the question is whether the solutions to the equation develop singularities from regular initial conditions and finite forces. I believe the answer to this question is Yes. The reason is that I expect that ultimately you'll need quantum physics to prevent singularities and the Navier-Stokes equation doesn't have quantum properties. Yes is in some sense the easier answer because all you need to do is to find an example of where that happens that fulfills all the requirements. So far, no one has found one. The reason I haven't actually worked on this is that, for one thing, because no one would have financed it, because it's too far of anything I've previously worked on, but also, on some level, I don't actually believe it'd work. More likely, that's a good reason for why it can't possibly work, that I'm blissfully too stupid to see. So, a great topic to ask a chatbot about. In somewhat more detail, the idea I had is to use some solution to Einstein's field equations with some suitable stress energy tensor, not that of the Navier-Stokes fluid, but so that there is a coordinate system in which some of the Einstein equations happen to be the Navier-Stokes equation if you identify the geometry with the fluid. Somehow, the time direction comes from the initial condition and then you use Penrose's singularity theorem to prove that you have to get a blow up. The difficulties are that first you need to find the solution and the coordinate system and you need to do that so that the forcing doesn't cause the blow up. I believe this to be possible because in GR there are ways to change between coordinate systems to keep some quantities regular. People have, of course, looked at the Navier-Stokes equation and general relativity, and there are known links between the Navier-Stokes equation and the solutions of general relativity, but most of these only work near the horizon, so they're not useful. However, if you do a search for Navier-Stokes and GR, you'd find all kinds of things that would distract you. Again, that makes it a good topic to ask a chatbot about. Now, you may ask, Okay, but if that isn't what she means, then what does she mean? I don't know. If I knew how it works, I wouldn't ask a chatbot about it. Loosely speaking, I think one could just, you know, go through all the known solutions to GR. There are a few hundred of them and check if there's one that might work. I think it seems worth a try. And it seems like the sort of thing that an AI should be good at if you could get it to actually do it. Okay, now let me talk a little about what I'd expect a smart student to say about this. First of all, they'd formalize the problem. What's the Navier-Stokes equation? What are the requirements of the Millennium problem? What are the singularity theorems? What do we know about solutions to GR and their symmetries? What's the overlap between the two? And then come up with a way to either systematically go through all known solutions that might work or come up with a proof for why it can't possibly work. Let's then look at how the models do. I use the same wording for all the models to get them started. Here is GPT-5 in thinking mode. 
It seems to think the Millennium problem doesn't allow forcing. That isn't correct. It's also confused about what I said about pushing the singularity from the forcing into the velocity field. So let me clarify this. Okay, here it comes up with suggestions for how to proceed and with some more prompting, digs up some solutions as a starting point. We're not going to solve this problem today. Let me just say it looks like it roughly understood the idea and the steps look kind of reasonable and we could move on from there. Now let's move on to Google DeepThink, for which you need to get an Ultra subscription that clocks in at an amazing 140 euros a month. It's very slow. The result is, okay, it's really just rephrased my text. So let me just prompt explicitly for to proceed. This like allegedly took 20 minutes. What does it say? This is basically, it's basically text for a grant proposal. Push it some more and it politely declines and writes, I cannot generate the novel conceptual breakthroughs that perform the specialized abstract mathematical reasoning required to solve a millennium problem. I've tried Gemini DeepThink for some other things previously and it's disappointing. It's wordy and vague and not anywhere near as good as GPT-5. I'm sorry, Demis. But it's true. I also tried Gemini 2.5, which is considerably faster. It tells me that it's a highly creative idea. Indeed, it's brilliant. It's also unworkable because Gemini thinks I want to put an incompressible fluid in the space time. So let me clarify this. The idea is now subtle and clever. Gemini now confuses time reversal symmetry with time reversibility. It also seems to think that the Navier-Stokes equation violates energy conservation, probably because it confuses energy with free energy. A few moments later, it tells me the quest is not feasible and the search is impossible. I think Gemini has a serious self-confidence issue. Then we have Claude Opus 4.1. Claude is the fastest to reply by a large margin, but it just produces a lot of text that's your standard LLM word salad. It thinks that three plus one dimensions isn't the same as four dimensions. This is poor. It's so poor, I can't bring up the energy to continue. I'm going to unsubscribe from this right now. And then there is Grok4, the expert. It points out the known links between Navia Stokes and GR, which won't work. It then thinks I want to put a fluid into space time. Let me correct this. It now seems to roughly get the idea and it suggests a seven line pseudo Python code, which is cute somehow. This isn't bad, but in practice, not very useful. So my verdict is GPT top, then there's a big gap, then there's Grok followed by Gemini 2.5, which might well be right that it's impossible, Gemini DeepThink, which really isn't worth the money, and at the very bottom there is Claude. I think this illustrates what the current models are good for and what not, what they are good at. They're really good now at digging up related work and explaining it, which is good for brainstorming. What they're not yet good at. First of all, they constantly conflate similar sounding but different physical concepts. Energy is not the same as free energy. An equation can be time reversible, but not invariant under time reversal. In another thing, I was working on GPT kept confusing two different Feynman diagrams, both of which are sometimes referred to as self energy. And the issue is, a student, you just have to tell this once. You are confusing these things. The models will bring back these mistakes over and over. The second related problem is that they sometimes switch notation in the middle of a reply or just switch to a different topic. For example, the other day GPT was going on about perturbative quantum gravity for an hour and then all of a sudden it switches to canonical quantum gravity and then to the semi-classical approximation. And if you don't know what these things are already, you'll end up with a lot of rubbish that doesn't fit together. The third problem problem, and that's the biggest issue I think, is that they don't actually develop new ideas in any sense. In the best case, they'll assemble reasonable looking equations and then massage them so that they prove 
whatever you want them to prove by skipping over the actual proof. The LMM idea of a new theory is a plausible looking sequence of arguments, not an actually correct one. One way you can try to prevent this is just by asking, is this correct or did you just make this up? And sure enough, most of the time they'll just admit they made it up. So my verdict for the moment is it's a mixed bag. The current models are very much stuck to the existing literature, which isn't useful if you want to do something new. If you kick them enough, they will eventually agree to do anything but then you can't trust them. For the time being, my advice would be to use them for literature research and background information. You can also get them quite effectively to criticize an idea if you specifically ask for it, but don't trust them with new ideas. By my assessment, these models are currently not anywhere near as good as a good student. So I guess physicists, jobs are safe from AI for the time being. One thing that AI is becoming really good at though is scam calls. I used to get a lot of these after my phone number leaked online and that was really an eye-opener. I've since signed up to Incogni, who've been sponsoring this video. You see, each time you open a website, they'll try to collect data about who you are and where you are and what other websites you've visited. If you then sign up for a website and fill in your personal details, they can and often do make money by selling your private information to data brokers. Most countries have laws against that and you can ask for your data to be removed, but doing this takes up a lot of time. Incogni automates the process of getting you out of those databases. You sign up and they'll contact the big sinners request that your personal details be removed and they'll keep on doing that. And if you want, they'll send you updates about the progress they're making. I'm glad there's now a simple solution to stop unfriendly people doing nasty things with my personal details. Incogni is super easy to use. You sign up, give them the information they should look for, and they go to work, like within a minute, basically. I now sleep better at night, and maybe I can help you sleep better too. If you use my code Zabina, or the custom link in the info below, you'll get 60% off of Incogni. That's an amazing deal, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.